God, as we take this moment, God, to remember His life, all that He meant to us, we ask that the Holy Spirit will come to comfort the trial family. God, we thank you, God, for keeping them even as they grieve, but also as they celebrate the great life that He lived. So, Father, be with us in this celebration of life. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This time we're going to ask here, his brother, Ron Parker, to come and share the words. I just like to say that um, uh, my brother is, uh, I love my brother, and my brother loved his family, and um, and I, in, in those hours, those last few hours that I held his hand, I could feel the love and, and the um, joy in his heart, that uh, he knows that he was loved, and that, that, that he is now with his parents, and then our, with our Holy Father in heaven, and that, and that to keep him in your heart, that you, he knows that he will always be in your heart, and never worry about him because he's 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 happy, and um, uh, and that he loves you. Um, he always had a smile on his face and a place in his heart for everybody he did he met, and um, I'm sure he's smiling today. Um, with his still or stare on um, because he's, a, he's happy. Hey, man, do you want to see me? Yeah, thank you all for coming. And I'm sure you appreciate it. Uh, if you're a member of the family, I'm 15 years old in the gym, so I've been serving for my family this year. Just to talk. Uh, I call him Jamie or Jimmy, really. Although a lot of people call him JJ. So he was the most unique member of our family. He was quiet, he was humble. He never had a bad word to say about anybody. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's have a word for him and I'll share with you. Uh, Verses God, I know this word, let it be comforting, let it minister. It will keep your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Luke chapter 10, uh, verse 33, of course, these words. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And when he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. Um, I asked uh, Brother Pryor to send me the obituary so that I could look over his life. And I'm, I'm always, as a pastor, uh, interested uh, with the lives of people in general. I like to hear stories. I just love to listen to people's lives and the experiences uh, that they've had. Just had one of those moments just now as I listened to these two brothers share some of their experiences from the military and reading uh, this brother's life. Uh, to have served in the military, to have entered into a position where he had top secret knowledge of certain things that was, were going on in our country. Uh, and I almost read like a movie, uh, just going through uh, his obituary, obituary. All of us live in that little dash. It's very short. It's fitting that it would be short because the scripture says that our lives are just like a vapor. You know, it's getting ready to turn cold here in Pittsburgh, and we're going to come out of our houses. And when we breathe and we see that air, and then all of a sudden that air that's exhaled is gone, the scripture says that our lives are that way. But some of us in that short of life have the ability to live some transformative and powerful lives. That's what I believe I read as I read this obituary. Uh, to have entered into the military service, traveled around the world, come back, repurposed his life uh, to go into engineering. But what caught my attention the most was when his brother likened him unto the Good Samaritan. Uh, this period of time, um, I've been on my theological soapbox concerning the Good Samaritan uh, because of its implications. Uh, you know the story. Um, good religious leader comes to Jesus. They were always trying to hem him up in his words and says to him, Good Master, what must we do to inherit eternal life? Jesus was a master of flipping it back on them and says to the good teacher, 
uh, well, you know the scriptures, you tell me. So he says, well, I need to love God with all my heart, and then I need to love my brother as myself. He said, that's right, that's good. But all of a sudden, the religious leader became convicted because inside his heart, he had hatred for an ethnic group known as the Samaritans. And then he said, well, fine, define who my brother is. Jesus begins to tell this story of the good Samaritan. He talks about a man that was mugged on the highway from Jericho to Jerusalem, left for dead. A priest, somebody of my guilt. A Levi, somebody also of my guilt, walked past him without ministering to him. But the good Samaritan stopped and ministered to that man. And as I read his life and the description that you guys gave of me, I saw a true life good Samaritan. One, because he tried it. He tried. Now that would seem like something exclusive that couldn't minister to all of us, but all of us are traveling, are we not? We're so journeying through life, and even if we've not gone around the world, we're moving from point A to point B. All of us are traveling. We're on a journey. Not only did he travel, but what became so powerful to me that I read was like the Good Samaritan, he transcended. He transcended. He said that he was able to love people from every background, every creed, every nationality, just like we see with the Good Samaritan. It was powerful because he traveled. But not only when he traveled, he transcended and was able to communicate with people from different backgrounds. And if there's ever a message we needed to hear in 2020, is to be able to love people that don't look like you or come from the same experience. And that's what he was able to do. So not only was he able to travel, not only did he transcend, but then you said he transmitted. That in that transcending, in that connective moment, that he was able to minister and share love, that he was the kind of brother to pour oil on somebody's wounds and to make sure that he cared for you. That's what the scripture says that his did. And that's what you said your brother did as well. But then as I prepare to close, not only did he travel, not only did he transcend, not only did he transmit, but finally, he had to make a transition. This transition that all of us have to make. It's the last move. Uh, I was telling these brothers uh, that uh, my son as well, that I haven't been here too long. I've only been in Pittsburgh for three years. I'm from North Carolina. And uh, you know, I moved up here. The house where I was at, I've been there for seven years. And you know, if you stay in the house over five years, you got stuff in every corner. Uh, and it was something to try to move. I mean, we're packing stuff up, trying to get up here. And uh, I mean, it got overwhelming. It got overwhelming until some of my friends who knew I was traveling uh, decided to come by and help. They called me and said, man, I know you're moving. Uh, we're going to come by and help you. And all of a sudden, it became easy because I had a friend to help me. Well, what a friend we have in Jesus. And in this last move, Jesus was able to help him to pack up to make his transition. Amen. 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 This time we'll have the uh, committal. Man that is born of a woman has but a short time to live is cut down like a flower. He flees as it were a shadow, never continues, in one state. In the midst of life, we are in death, of whom we may seek for comfort, but of you, O Lord. For who for our sins are justly displeased, yet, O Lord, most holy, O Lord, most mighty, O holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitter pains of eternal death. You know, O Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not your merciful ears to our prayer, but spare us, Lord, most holy, God most mighty, a holy, merciful Savior, most worthy judge eternal. Suffer us not at our last hour for any pains of death to fall from you. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of the world the soul of our departed brother, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Looking for the general resurrection on the last day. And the light 
the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, and whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead. The corruptible bodies of those who die in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body, according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right from henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. O merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, whom whoever believes shall live though he die, and whoever lives and believes in him shall not die eternally, we meekly ask you, O Father, to raise us from the dead of sin to the life of righteousness, that when we shall depart this life, we may rest in him, and at the general resurrection, at the last day, be found acceptable in his sight and receive that blessing which your beloved son shall then pronounce to all those that love and fear you, saying, Come, you blessed children of my Father. Receive the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Grant this, we ask you, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our mediator and redeemer. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us forevermore. Amen. Amen.
Each fold of the American flag has a symbolic significance. I encourage you to go online and look up the 13 folds of the American flag. This concludes our service and it's a privilege for us to be a service to you and your family. This concludes our service.